Today we're going to talk a bit about pediatric urology. That means urology that is offered to children. I think to start off one should know what urology really is. It is the surgical management of conditions of the urological tract and the male external genitalia. Now the urological tract comprises of the kidneys, the ureters, the bladder, the prostate and the urethra. If we think of conditions that children have, they are either acquired or they are congenital. Now, somebody that works with reconstructive work in the pediatric field works a lot with the genetic abnormalities. We have a wide range of genetic abnormalities, ranging from kidney problems, ureteric development problems, bladder problems, as well as problems of the urethra with obstructive valves, and then a large part of genital abnormalities, of which hypospadia, which is a common disease or a common, a relatively common disorder, comes to mind immediately. There are also scarcer and more complicated and more extensive problems that we still encounter in South Africa and that to a large extent has disappeared from first world countries due to the fact that the children are aborted when on diagnosis. Now of the congenital abnormalities, the kidney problems and the ureteric problems need a little bit of mention. When you have a developmental abnormality in the kidneys, the kidney tends to blow up. We call it hydronephrosis or water in the kidney. And that usually needs to be clarified and treated by surgical means. In the modern world, it's often picked up already in utero, meaning for the, with the normal ultrasound investigations that are done, abnormalities in the kidneys or bladders are picked up. It is therefore very important for the sonographer to visualize the kidneys and also to visualize the bladder. If there is no bladder that fills up in the uterus or in the fetus in the uterus, it must be noted because it can be that the bladder outlet has not developed and a condition like extrophy of the bladder with the bladder wall is actually exposed uh, has occurred. That is a really debilitating condition. And there is surgical management. We have managed, managed many of those cases, but it is something that can be avoided. And some, one of those conditions that we uh, termination of the pregnancy must be considered. A well-known condition amongst people is, the, is a condition called the psychoureteric reflux, or people are, speak of reflux. We get the reflux of the esophagus, which is a common thing in small children where they need antacids for, and also reflux where the valves of the ureters that end in the bladder also get is deficient and they must be usually managed by some other surgical needs if of a significant degree. We are very conservative in the management of the reflux in the sense that many of them can get by without surgery. Now, how do these children present? How do we know that my child might have a, a, a kidney or a urological problem? The first thing is the routine ultrasounds that's being done. The second thing, even from newborn onwards, is usually a bladder or a urinary tract infection. Now, it's important to know what an infection of the urinary tract is and how it is diagnosed. A definition of a urinary tract infection is actively dividing bacteria or bacteria that grow in 
the kidneys, the ureters, or the bladder. So the only way to really confirm this diagnosis is you must correct a urine, you collect a urine sample in the right way, and that urine must be sent to a laboratory and a culture must be obtained. It is not a correct diagnosis or a correct enough diagnosis just to do a lab stick test in this office. So my advice to parents are, if a doctor says that it looks as if there's an infection, let's give some antibiotics, you can agree to giving the antibiotics, but it is also important that that urine is sent away to the laboratory. Because once a diagnosis of a urinary tract infection is made, that is where the urologist comes in. Because a urinary tract infection, even if diagnosed with a positive culture, is not a diagnosis. It is still a symptom. And it is the work of the urologist to determine whether this is an infection with a serious underlying condition or whether it's an infection that just spontaneously occurred like a cold or a flu and will pass off and no specific intervention is needed. We use the terms complicated and uncomplicated infections. So when a urinary tract infection is diagnosed, my message to you is make sure that it's diagnosed correctly. If a positive culture is confirmed, then that kid must be referred to a urologist for further investigation. He will then try and determine whether there is conditions that needs to be managed surgically or otherwise, or whether it is safe to proceed with conservative management, treating with antibiotics and following up the child. It might be a difficult decision to make, but you need the full story and you need the correct investigations done before you can make that decision. So I think in summary, one should know that a urinary tract infection or an abnormal ultrasound in utero of the feet developing fetus is probably the two most important signs that there could be an underlying urological problem in your child should see a urologist.